Step 4. Closing remarks. Quantum technologies are not a question of if, but a question of when. They are coming, and they are coming fast. Quantum computers are currently at the forefront of the second quantum revolution. Companies like IBM and Google are constantly producing devices of a uh, large and larger number of qubits of better and better quality, allowing us to perform computations which are more and more complicated. Quantum networks, on the other hand, are not as far, but they're not lagging too much behind. UKD networks based on single photons have been demonstrated already. On the other hand, entangled networks are on their way as well. Many countries are investing large amounts of money into building the first test beds of quantum networks. And in fact, simple QKD devices are commercially available. So, not only physicists are switching of thinking from classical light about quantum light, but also engineers. And this module has been designed to capture this switch. How do we go from classical light to quantum light? How do we go from description of electric fields using classical Maxwell's equations to um, single photons, but using the language of quantum mechanics? So we started this module talking about classical light. We, we introduced the notion of wave motion, plane waves, standing waves, and this culminated in the introduction and derivation of wave equation. In the previous module, we treated light as a propagating ray. In this module, we started with geometric optics, meaning we looked at waves. We also introduced a very important tool, the Fourier analysis. This allowed us to introduce the notion of a wave packet or a superposition of individual harmonic waves, which we called modes. And we analyzed these frequency components. Even though we introduced Fourier analysis in the section on classical light, don't think that it only is useful in classical mechanics. It's a very general tool that is used frequently in quantum mechanics as well, and in fact in many other branches of engineering and science. And finally, we concluded our discussion of classical light by looking at Maxwell's equations. We looked at propagating electromagnetic radiation in free space, and we looked at how it interacts with different types of material, namely with dielectrics and with metals. Then we switched to quantum light. And the first question that we answered was, why quantum light? And we saw that trying to apply our knowledge of classical electromagnetic fields to observable effects, such as the photoelectric effect, we encountered many problems. And we saw that we can solve all of these problems by simple notion. In fact, that light is composed of photons. So the next question was, how do we describe these photons? What language, what mathematical formalism do we need to talk about uh, light as photons? And that led us to the discussion of quantization of the electromagnetic field. This was a completely new language, and we talked about operators, Hamiltonians, number states. And I admit that this is not an easy topic at first. Therefore, we gave you a lot of exercises in applying this formalism, namely in the form of calculating the photodetection signals for single photodetection or double the photodetection or coincidence counts. We show you how to apply the formalism uh, when we talk about beam splitters and interferometers. And we also talked about sources of single photons. So, what lies ahead? What's going to come after this module? Quantum networks rely on quantum components. Now we have a good uh, foundation in the language of describing and talking about these components, and more importantly, doing calculations. So we are in a good spot to harness the power of quantum effects. In the next module, we're going to be asking questions. What are the new quantum networking protocols? How do we distribute entangled states over large distances? And once we do that, how can we use these distributed quantum states to achieve something new or something better? And more importantly, do we need to throw out all of our knowledge built on considering classical networks and start from scratch? Or what can we uh, uh, use that we learn from classical networking in quantum networking? I hope that you are just as excited as I am about the next module on quantum internet. See you there.